Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god. So, Ice Nine Kills new album comes out tomorrow. I am so super, 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 super fucking excited. This is the one album I've look, been looking forward to for ever since I heard about it. But anyways, um, I haven't heard any of the other songs other than what they brought out so far. Which is like, they brought out like three songs. Wow, I look tired as shit. And my eyes look red. Yeah, I uh, didn't get much sleep last night. And I just got off work like an hour ago. So, I'm pretty exhausted. But, um, anyways, I'm going to read you, you guys some stuff. Uh, this comes from uh, Cryptic Rock. The website Cryptic Rock. They are talking about the album track by track. And here's what they had to say about it. This, I, oh man, I'm so excited. Alright, um... Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Eric Draven, Jigsaw, Bruce, no, not the boss, but the shark. What? Bruce the shark from, like, Finding Nemo? What the fuck? Um, besides being beloved horror icons, what do, what do they all have in common? Well, that's easy. They all grace the silver screen. The latest thematic masterpiece from Ice Nine Kills, which arrives to big and small screens and ears on Friday, October 5th, 2018, thanks to Fearless Records. If you know anything whatsoever about Ice Nine Kills or simply Inc., then you know that they love themselves some horror. Who doesn't? Whether it be in the form of literature or film, known for their cinematically inspired songs and horror movie themed merch merchandise design. Sorry if I can't talk right now, you guys. It, like I said, I'm dead tired, so you'll just have to bear with me. Uh, where was I? Known for their cinematically inspired songs and horror me movie-themed merchandise designs, these mass holes formed in 2002 and have been working hard ever since. Despite a multitude of lineup changes, the band has managed to release four full-length albums throughout the past 12 years, ranging from 2006's Last Chance to Make Amends to 2015's literature-themed and aptly titled Every Trick in the Book. That's a good album. That's a really good album. With a respectable dedication to the road, Ice Nine Kills have found themselves st sharing stages with nearly every band in the scene, from Motionless and White to A Day to Remember, Thursday to Norma Jean, they are indeed veterans of the Vans Warped Tour and held down court at the Red Dawn stage all summer 2018 long. You checked them out, right? I wish I had. Um, fresh from that triumphant final cross-country Warped Tour, Ice Nine Kills, vocalist Spencer Carnes, guitarist, vocalist Justin, JD, the Bleak, sorry, I can't, sorry if I don't pronounce her names right, I suck at pronouncing names, you all know that and bassist Justin Morrow are primed to, del to deliver their career-defining masterpiece, The Silver Screen. Producer Drew Folk, Motionless and White, and Bullet for My Valentine helm the band's fifth full-length studio offering, which provides a lucky 13-track selection of horror-inspired mayhem, with several of the songs actual actually having portions of their vocals recorded inside their corresponding famous movie locations. That is really fucking interesting. Um, the end result is an album that is a must for both heavy and music lovers and horror, horror fanatics. God, yes. This is like the album of the year that I've been waiting on. Alright, um, let's see where I was. The Silver Scream erupts into first single and video, The American Nightmare. So here we are, we're going to be talking about it track by track. And I am going to be listening to this album as soon as it drops. Um, sorry, I'm filming with my phone, so I'm just kind of, you know, where was I? Um, I'll just start over. The silver screen erupts into first single video, The American Nightmare. Freddy Krueger gets one pummeling portrayal here with vicious verses balanced with del deliciously infectious melodic choruses. It's a perfect start to an album that is as exciting as it is fabulously authored, and the slashing good times continue with the second single video, Thank God It's Friday. Hell yeah. 
I love that song. Here, Ink go to summer camp with that poor little drowning victim, Jason Voorhees, and blend synths into their heavy assault to author one of their best tracks to date. Hell yeah. Gotta agree with that. You can't help but sing along to the curse of Crystal Lake, folks. And here we go with one that I haven't heard yet. For Stabbing in the Dark, the boys pay homage to Michael Myers. Fuck yes. I knew Michael Myers was going to be in this album. The boys pay homage to Michael Myers with racing magical guitar work and one of Carnus's best vocal performances to date. Reaching toward entirely new heights, they provide a cinematic masterpiece of sound that feels like John Carpenter tangoing with Danny Elfman. What the fuck? John Carpenter and Danny Elfman mixed together. Holy shit. God, I want to hear this one so bad. I want to hear this one so bad. Danny Elfman is like one of my favorite uh, movie music composers. I mean, Nightmare Before Christmas, Edward Scissorhands. Hell yes. Mix that with Ice Nine Kills. Damn. Um, let's do, 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 where was I? I keep losing my spot. All while donning the devil's power. Tossing a wrench into the sonic works, the trio switched to a more straightforward rock sound on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre-inspired Savages, which feels worthy of an anthemic sing-along despite its cannibalistic tendencies. That sounds a little fucked up, but awesome. I can't wait. It's all systems go when sweeping cinematics anchor the game of the Jig is Up, which features Randy Strohmeyer, which is the singer of Finch, the sounds of animals fighting also, on guitar. In turn, or, I don't know if that was a singer. No, it says on guitar, so maybe it's just the guitarist from Finch. I don't know. I've only ever heard make one or two Finch songs, so I never heard of the other band. Um, where was I? Um, in turn, the Bleak has some truly standout vocals here as well. Carnus places a lyrical spin on the classic quote, Buildings burn, people die, but real love is forever, which in turn nods to Ink's own Buildings burn, people die, on the Crow inspired A Grave Mistake. Here, the acoustic and piano-driven power ballad-esque track leans the boys back toward a more straight-up rock sound, something that would sit well alongside, say, Avenged Sevenfold. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Ice Nine Kills lure out their comedic side on the hysterically fun Jaws-inspired Rocking the Boat, which features former bandmate Jeremy Schwartz, Carnus, and Schwartz, provide a pitch-perfect duet on the track, which name-checks each of the band's previous albums and EPs in its lyrics. Alongside some truly fishy puns, this swims right into the very metal Enjoy Your Slay, an ode to The Shining. Appar appropriately, the song features special guest vocals from Sam Kubrick, grandson of the film's famous director. That was a really good song, too. Stanley Kubrick, who is in the band Shield, similar to Savage's Freak Flag, sees the band going for a more straightforward rock sound with atmospheric synths weaving throughout. Despite the connection to Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects, the sound here is anthemic rock with entrancing electronics. Damn. I'm getting more and more excited. For the Edward Scissorhands nod, yes! 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 That's all I had to hear. Edward Scissorhands. They did an Edward Scissorhands song. Fuck yes. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to listen to this. Um, for the Edward Scissorhands nod, The World in My Hands, Ice Nine Kills bring in Tony Lovato of Mest to provide background vocals on the driving rocker that features one truly guitar, killer guitar solo. Despite it being October, the boys jump ahead to Christmas with a hysterical Silent Night, Deadly Night, an ode to Mary Axmas. Here they blend a deadly assault with church bells and cap it all off with a, with a mall Santa to aid in the glory mayhem. You can practically see Carnus in his ugly cr Christmas sweater finery decking the halls with theatrical blood. Oh, Jack. They get a little hairy with an American Werewolf in London inspired ballad, Love Bites, which features Chelsea Talmadge of Stranger Things and a beautiful duet with Carnus. Stranger Things? 
You're from the show Stranger Things? Is that who is that what they're saying? Like this it features a one of the girls from Stranger Things? Hmm. That's kind of strange. Ha, huh, strange. Uh anyways. Ultimately, Carnus does his best psycho flesh eating clown on it as the end. I knew it. I fucking knew they were gonna do Pennywise on this album. You can't do a horror movie themed album and not do it. Oh, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Edward Scissorhands, it, Michael Myers. Damn, this is this it's gonna be amazing. Um Ultimately, Cornish does his best psycho flesh-eating clown on It is the end. An enticement to Georgie, that sweet, fleshly little child. In this carnival of carnage, Will Salazar of Phoenix, Texas, guests alongside J.R. What's the name? I'm going to pronounce that name. And Buddy Schraub of Less Than Jake, who lend their horns to the fanfare that takes place in the ska metal name of Stephen King's classic It. We all float down here. Hiya, Georgie. Uh, I can't wait. Sorry that uh, that really sucked. I can do it a lot better than that. It's just you know it was, it was on the spot. On the silver screen, there are blisteringly heavy moments, but there are also nods back to the band's pop punk roots. Throughout the collection, tongue and cheek lyrics and puntastic humor mix into the band's zillion influences to create a sound that is never ever boring. Like a great film, horror or horror or otherwise. Each listen to the silver screen will divulge something new, breaking out the popcorn with extra butter. Cryptic Rock gave Ice Nine Kills the silver screen. Five out of five stars, you guys. Five out of five fucking stars. Damn, I cannot wait. Oh, God, this album is going to be fucking amazing. I cannot wait to hear, but hear Pennywise. going to hear Edward Scissorhands, Michael Myers. Oh. Those are the three that I'm most excited to hear. The three mo I'm most excited to hear are those right there. I gotta admit, whenever I saw the Love Bites track, I was kind of really hoping that it was like a... Um, which I, I knew it wasn't, because I knew this was like a horror movie themed album. But I was kind of hoping that it would have been like a Def Leppard cover. I am still waiting on one of these bands, like a metalcore band or just a heavy metal band in general. To redo Def Leppard's "Love Bites" because that's my favorite Def Leppard song ever, and I just want to—I just want to hear it all heavy and shit. You know, I want to hear it just fucking epic. But um, yeah, I still have yet to hear that. But I'm so super stoked for this uh, this album, and it comes out. I don't know if it drops right at midnight or what, but I don't even know if I'll be awake for it because I'm super exhausted. Had a long night at work, and yeah, like I said, I only slept maybe a couple of hours before I went to work, so I'm pretty exhausted. And Jack is down there playing with my work boots. You tear those up, you're buying me new ones, bud. Just a heads up. Alright, I'm going to let you guys go. I know um, some of you did didn't get a chance to join in on the live video that I'm doing right now but you can always watch it again it'll be up on my channel And yeah. but I'm going to let you guys go I'm going to go grab a bite to eat and then I don't know I'm not, I'm not going to put up a video tonight I'm just going to put this one up and um, call it good but I'm off work tomorrow so I'll be putting a video up tomorrow or tomorrow night one of the two <sighs> All right, I'll let you guys go. I love you guys. Stay terrified.